Ah, VR gaming. The mad vision conjured up in the 1980s of wearing massive headsets to enter virtual worlds. Once a pipe dream 40 years ago is now a virtual reality. It costs an arm and a leg, but VR is finally here. HTC Vive, Valve Index, PlayStation VR, and the one I personally own, Oculus Rift S. One of the first companies to truly enter the VR business, Oculus is one of the longest running companies to take a crack at making VR available to the masses. And from what I've played of it, I think it's done a pretty good job. Oculus Rift S is reasonably priced, well for a VR headset at least, and thanks to its inbuilt cameras, it requires very little setup to get up and running. Top this off with the soon to arrive Oculus Quest 2, an entirely wireless headset, and Oculus really does have the best entries for the platform. What's most important though is, as with any platform, the games. From first person shooters to music games and, well, pretty much back to first person shooters again, the world of VR gaming is still growing, with many indie developers making smaller experiences of VR for a small price, and some bigger companies like Valve making huge games like Half-Life Alex. In this series I'm going to be looking to showcase both kinds of games, big and small. So let's jump into part one of the Pixel Tavern's Extravaganza. This is one of the best indie puzzle games I think I've ever played. Harking back to classic spy movies, the style of this game is instantly captivating. Kicking things off with a James Bond style opening entirely in VR, followed by a small tutorial to get you ready, you are soon thrust into an escape room style puzzle. You're trapped in a car on a plane and you need to open the cargo bay doors to drive your way out. But first, you need to dodge the booby traps, use the car's powerful weapons, smash open windows, defuse bombs, and optionally, light up a cigar, sit back, and wait for death. The game mostly consists of investigating the space around you to try and work out how to escape. You have to search every nook and cranny, push every button, and check out every object you can find, all within a pretty tight deadline. You pretty much have as long as you like to look at the environment around you, maybe set up a few items ready to grab later, but as soon as you start the first process to escape, you better react and think fast to survive. The slightest wrong move or slow reaction and something will end up killing you. It's tense, fast paced, and ultimately very fun to play. The only downside is there's only five different missions consisting of the aforementioned plane escape, a submarine escape, mixing chemicals and stopping a deadly virus, and a couple more. So at least every level is unique, but for a game currently sitting at just under £20 on Steam, even three years after its release, I expected a bit more and was incredibly disappointed by its length, running in at around an hour or so, depending on how long you take to solve the puzzles. Thankfully though, if you do want to play it, you can do so for free if you get a trial of Viveport from HTC, along with several other games that I'll be showcasing in this video. So you can play it for free and enjoy this fun, stylized spy escape room game. Enter Cosmos. Well, this one came out of nowhere for me. Literally, this game was just in my Steam library. At over 160 games, I suppose there is bound to be a few that I have no idea that I own. Anyway, I jumped into this one having no idea what it was, only to find myself deep in outer space in a Russian landing pod, preparing to enter the Earth's atmosphere. There are dials everywhere to control your oxygen, switches to go to different controls, 1960s era screens, and a Russian cosmonaut preparing you for landing. For the next 20 to 30 minutes, you will be controlling this tiny pod as it enters the atmosphere and runs into a host of problems, including the Russians having no idea who you are and the Americans jumping in to try and steal some secrets from you. You have two options, you can either follow the instructions of the Russians or follow those of the Americans. When I played I took the Americans advice to see where it took me, 
after several failed attempts and burning to a crisp, I finally made it to Earth. At least I think I did. The only issue with Intercosmos is rather than being a game, it's much more of a demo. You follow a set of instructions and manically try to keep the pod in one piece to survive. You turn dials, you flick switches and you push buttons as you cruise your way in for landing. It's fun, but it's more just for a one-time playthrough. If you see this pop up in your library randomly or see it cheap, give it a try for a good laugh for 20 to 30 minutes. Mini Motor Racing X Jumping into more titles available on the Viveport service is this basic but enjoyable Micro Machine style racer. If you fancy some arcade style racing in VR, this one fits the bill nicely. The game is based around the vehicles being remote controlled cars. As such, you have a few different ways you can drive and views you can play from. You can use a steering wheel in midair, kind of like using the Wii wheel in Mario Kart. You can use a trigger style RC car controller. A bit fiddly, but with some practice, you could get good with it. And in my opinion, the best option is in first person from within the car, as when the others are slamming into you and you're drifting around a corner, despite it not looking real, it does feel real. And it makes you feel like you're driving around in a go-kart, crashing into others without the worry of, well, you know, dying in a fiery crash or going to jail for trying to kill someone. It comes with a standard upgrade system for each car in the game and you unlock more vehicles as you go along. It's not exactly going to be innovating any other titles, but it's a fun entry point for VR racing, as it doesn't require perfect driving skills. It's got local and online multiplayer, and you can play with or without basic Mario Kart style power-ups. Speaking of Mario Kart, this really makes me want to try out the Mario Kart VR experience that popped up in London a few years ago. The idea of throwing Cooper shells and dodging bullet bills while driving around in a go-kart, underwater, upside down and gliding through the air sounds like one of the best possible experiences that you could get from VR. Mini Motor Racing X feels like a very basic version of Mario Kart. Sadly though, it's very unlikely we will get Mario Kart VR available for purchase, so if you want VR kart style racing, this is a good place to start. Creed Rise to Glory, another one on the Viveport service and one that I wouldn't really blame you if you didn't want to give it a go. It looks cheap, it's a movie tie-in which has sucked since the 90s, and it came out of nowhere with no advertisement. The game consists of multiple boxing matches working your way up through the different circuits and a gym to train in with your own trainer and equipment. Now the main draw that made me want to play this is how it could play and ultimately, it didn't start off very well. First off, it only shows the controls for the HTC Vive controllers, so it's hard to figure out what button actually does what. You have to learn how to move around, which for some reason you do like this, and the hands don't really match up to the angle you're holding your controllers at, so everything is just slightly clunky. Yet somehow, at least what I played was really intense, immersive, and ultimately fun. After some basic training with a punching bag covering targeted body and head attacks, reaction times and learning how to walk, you jump into your first fight. If you have played Wii Boxing, take that, put it in VR and up the speed and intensity and you have Creed Rise to Glory. The graphics may be rough, but ultimately when you're ducking, dodging, blocking and attacking, you don't notice. You're instead focused on beating the hell out of your opponent and not getting knocked out yourself. After a flurry of blows and dodging, I finally won my first fight. And damn, it's not only fun, but surprisingly a good workout as well, as you have to dodge fast and hit hard to do damage to your opponent and put up a fight. You really end up feeling like you're in a boxing match and fighting for the belt. Just put on some Eye of the Tiger while you play and you will get that full rocky experience. Batman Arkham VR. Ah, oh, this one was so annoying. I picked this game up for about £3, so I'm not particularly bothered by how short it was. But if I was one of the people who bought it at full price, at around £15 to £20, I'd be livid. This one sounded so promising. Developed by Rocksteady directly, amazing graphics, strong voice acting, several characters from the Batman universe making an appearance, and this had the makings of a great entry to AAA VR games. It starts off really well with a first person view as the man of bats himself, you suit up and head out into the night. 
You can grapple hook around the back cave, check out character models, different trinkets and vehicles, and then head off into Gotham via the Batmobile. The game then mostly consists of using Batman's detective skills and your own to work out what happened to Nightwing, who has mysteriously been killed. You can see the fights up close and have to spot the clues in order to progress. You get to interrogate the Penguin, solve a few puzzles, and that's about it. This game is painfully short and incredibly basic. I understand that this is one of the first big VR games, but this had so much potential and turned into what feels like a tech demo. All you really do is watch stuff happen. Batman talks about them, you move on to the next area, rinse and repeat. Amazingly, this is actually somewhat interesting, almost like a VR version of a point and click adventure. The only problem is, after pulling you in with an interesting story, it ends with, well, nothing. You for some reason end up in a prison cell, some amazingly cool and crazy illusions start happening, and you suddenly turn into the Joker. This bit is amazing, until the scene suddenly ends out of nowhere and it's the entire end of the game, just an hour or so after starting and the credits are rolling. I think the ending is trying to say you were the Joker the whole time, or the Joker killed Nightwing, which wouldn't really make any sense, or Batman killed Nightwing, has gone crazy and become the Joker, or the Scarecrow has gassed him and this is all in his head, or Rocksteady couldn't think of an ending and decided to throw this one together at the last minute. Yeah, that one seems the most likely. If this was a free VR game attached to, say, Batman Arkham Knight, or otherwise not advertised as a full game, it wouldn't be so annoying, but they bigged it up so much at pre-release that it feels like a cop-out. It's worth giving it a go if you really want to try out Batman in VR and you see it cheap like I did, but otherwise, this just feels like an undercooked VR game that had all its potential squandered just to be in the group of first VR games to release. What a letdown. Not too unlike Rocksteady's other game at the time, Batman Arkham Knight. Let's finish up part 1 with the latest game in this list, Star Wars Squadrons. Flying around in deep space fighting enemies and destroying massive ships feels like what VR was made for. This is one of the best VR games I've played and I cannot imagine playing it outside of VR anymore. Announced just a few months ago, Star Wars Squadrons is a successor to the classic Star Wars Rogue Squadron games that spanned the N64 and GameCube and had you reliving classic Star Wars space battles and trying out new ones as well. Squadrons keeps the same idea rolling but with a new story set initially before and then after the fall of the Empire. It follows characters from both sides, the New Republic and the Empire. Story-wise, that's all you really need to know. Gameplay-wise though, this game is amazing. Apart from cutscenes, the game is fully VR compatible and has you carrying out multiple dogfight style missions, destroying giant fleets, and doing it all in multiple Star Wars ship variants. All this in VR is genuinely amazing to experience. The feel of scale and immersion that you just do not get playing on a normal TV. The ability to look around your surroundings, to see enemies outside your side windows, and keep that chase going is exhilarating. And when you are flying upside down on the underside of a Star Destroyer, dodging laser fire and enemy TIE fighters or X-Wings, is some of the craziest experiences I've had in gaming, let alone VR itself. The controls are perfectly balanced for standard controls, and I hear flight sticks are good as well. Sadly, the Oculus Touch controllers do not work, but I feel they probably wouldn't have provided the precision required anyway. You have to manage your ship's abilities by diverting power between your weapons to stop them from overheating, your engines for more speed, and your shields for better defense. Making the whole experience feel complex yet intuitive throughout the 10 or so hour campaign. Included is an awesome multiplayer dogfight mode and fleet battles that are not only fun, but also cross-play between PC, Xbox and PS4, giving you a large player base. To top it off, this game is classified as a budget title, so clocks in at around £30 on launch day. This is a damn near perfect VR experience that will keep you coming back for more. Let's hope the game gets support for further content, as currently, it seems like EA doesn't really give a shit about this game and it may end up becoming a bit of a forgotten gem if it doesn't get the support it deserves. 
Either way though, this is some of the best experience you can get from VR. Well, that's it for part one. Come back for part two soon, where I will cover some of the best VR games I've come across. And I'll discuss whether or not I think VR is currently worth it, and what games I'm currently looking forward to. Thank you very much for watching Extravert Games of Part 1. My name's Phil, I'm the creator of the Pixel Tavern. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button, hit subscribe, and click the bell icon to stay notified of any new videos including part two of Extravaganza. Know of any hidden VR games I should mention next time? Let me know in the comments below. Until then, if you've enjoyed this video, you can see more on screen now. Until the next video, everyone, thank you very much for watching.